Hi, welcome to my kitchen today. I am going to be making a sugar cookie, um, sugar Christmas cookie. This cookie is so neat because you can make it for any holiday just by changing the jello. So I am going to first start with my sugar and I'm going to have three fourths of a cup of sugar and I'm going to use my shortening. Um, I can get it all out of there. I'm going to keep my recipe on top of my counter because I don't want to mess up. Um, my shortening is one third of a cup and I just washed my hands. So my fingers are clean because I will be using them off and on. Now with this recipe, we're going to be creaming those two items together. I guess I'll get a clean fork too. I bet everybody's trying to get their Christmas cookies made. I love this recipe because you can make it for any holiday, any holiday, just by changing your jello. So we'll see what happens here. Come on. I haven't really got too many of my Christmas cookies and candies made yet. Kind of getting behind a little bit. So I better get myself in gear and get busy and get some of them done. Now you'll want to start out by preheating your oven to 350. Okay, you put all your dry ingredients in first. My grandma always loved to bake sugar cookies. She said, Paul, pa, Paul, that was my grandpa. We called him Paul. He loved sugar cookies. He said, told her, he says, why do you make them so small? Okay, we've got our salt. We have a fourth of a teaspoon and a teaspoonful of uh, baking powder. He says, I don't know why you make your cookies so small. He says, it makes me have to run back to the kitchen half a dozen times. And he said, if you make them bigger, I'd only have to make one or two trips. Mama says, you don't need to make that many trips because you don't need that many at one time. But Paul was a big man. Uh, he stood about six, one, six, two. And... Uh, he wasn't fat. He was just husky built. He was a farmer. And he, uh, he says it takes a lot of food to fill this body up. So I always laughed about that. When we were there, I would sneak out in the kitchen. I'd go out in the kitchen with my grandma and I'd be standing there. She'd be baking and she'd get, would take the first tray off and get them on the rack. And I'd go over and get two or three cookies and I'd walk out in the living room and I'd slip them to Paul and go back out in the kitchen and help get some more ready. And uh, okay, we're gonna put our flour in there next. One time I did that and Mama says, you think you're smart, don't you, sis? She said, but you're not. I know what you're doing. She said, quit giving them to him. <laughs> oh but I always took him out to him. He was a good papa. My sister Carol and I used to sit on the, they had this navy, no, it wasn't navy, it was a blue, but it wasn't navy, it was, it was a blue velvet living room suit. And uh, the chair arms were, I wish they made them like that today, chair arms were about this wide and they had wood across and down the front. And they were real firm. You could sit on the arms of the chairs. And uh, my sister Carol and I used to sit on the arms of the chairs. And we'd sit there and Paul would read the Bible or tell us stories. And uh, I love to hear his stories. 
because you knew they weren't true. Okay, I'm putting a tablespoon of milk in here. He is making them up as he went, but they were cute anyway. I loved them. And then you'll want one egg beat up. And I've already beat it up. But you know, the kids today don't, they don't sit around and listen to their grandpa's stories that much anymore. Uh, I wish they did. But they don't. But they would if Paul was around because Paul always had good stories to tell them. <laughs> okay. And I didn't get my vanilla out. I need some vanilla. Here so I can wipe the rim off so I don't have problems trying to get it open. Now I'm going to say if you have trouble, if it doesn't want to come together good, like mine's not, um, you might want to add just a little bit more milk. And that's what I'm going to do. One tablespoon wasn't quite enough, but you don't want too much. I'm going to end up adding probably about two tablespoons. That feels better. You can tell by the feel of the dough if you need a little bit more, and if you do, just go ahead and add it. And then I've got my oven preheating. I might have already said that. Preheating at 350. These are pretty made for Easter and Valentine's Day or just any holiday you want to make them. I know we used to set out on the front porch. Mama and Pa had a big house, big farmhouse. And uh, we'd set out on the front porch and Pa would tell us stories. Mama would say, Pa, that's not true. Now, don't tell those kids that because you know it's not true. Or he'd tell us about somebody in the neighborhood, their house getting broken into. And or a ghost being in this house or something. <laughs> and she'd say, you're going to scare those kids to death. Now quit it, Paul. <laughs> we would, my sister Carol would get real scared. She was four years younger than me, and it would scare her. Scared me, some of them, he told. Okay, now, this is how we're going to make them Christmassy or any other holiday that you want to make them. You're going to take your jello, and I don't know, maybe you've tried this before. If you have, let me know. I'm using lime jello for green, and um, But if you've tried these before, let us know about it. Let us know how you like them. But this is a very old recipe, so I'm sure some of you have. I'm sure your grandma's tried them. I 
and that's a cranberry because I wanted red. Then I've already prepared my pan, uh, but I'm not very organized because I didn't get my glass out yet. Okay, we're going to make our cookies, Put our, drop our cookies. It says use a, a spoon, but I like using these because you get about the same size cookie and if I use a spoon by the time I get to the end I've got a pancake instead of a cookie I've got one that Paul would eat it'd be so big he'd love that one I hope you all are getting ready for Christmas, I guess. I'm sure you are. I'm just running behind, and I don't know why. There's no excuse for it. I'm just being lazy, I think. I usually have half of my cookies and candy made by now. We've got time. And now you're just going to take your glass and dip it in water and press your cookie down like so. Only don't do like I did. I didn't wet it again. I think you can press it down a couple times without wetting it. Okay, Vera. It's funny because my glass has a star in the bottom of it. And I didn't realize that. It makes my cookie look pretty. And I didn't know that. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my jello, my green, and I'm just going to sprinkle it on top of it, on top of my cookie. Um, my sister and I used to, we'd ask mommy every once in a while if we could have a box of jello. And she said, what do you want Jello for? Because we just want it, Mom. And she let us have it. We'd take it outside and sit and eat it. <laughs> it was always so good. I guess I could have put this in a salt shake and done it, but I'm doing it with my fingers. And then make some red ones. You bake these for about eight minutes.
And if you want to, you can put sprinkles on them too. But I just, I never wanted the sprinkles when I had this on them. So I just don't do it. But do what you want. Make them your own. That's what they look like going into the oven. We're going to put them in there for eight minutes. And then I'll be back. Christmas cookies. Um, see how the jello just kind of glitters on there. It's so pretty, I think. And you can do that with um, for Valentine's Day or Easter or whatever. And it's a real good soft sugar cookie. So. I hope you'll try it, and if you have tried it, let me know. I'd like to know, and you, you may have already tried it, because like I said, um, it's an old, old recipe. So I hope you'll enjoy it. I enjoyed making them, and um, if you add just a little bit less um, jello on there, it kind of glitters a little bit more like that. I added a little bit too much probably of the red, but it's all according to what you want. So it's fun. Let the kids help you make them. I'm gonna see if I can't get the grandkids in here to make some, but uh, my husband said the sugar cookie was really good because it's soft. He likes a soft sugar cookie. So we'll be bringing you some more Christmas recipes and um, try it. Give us a thumbs up. Tell your friends about us. And um, we really, really appreciate all of you. We love you and we thank you bunches. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.